Hey guys, here is our recording for the last skill in Unit 4, Inverse Functions. Graph the same, graph on the same graph, f of x equals 2x plus 8 and g of x equals 1 half x minus 4. So what I want to do is, let's start graphing f of x. f of x is a line with the y-intercept at 8, the slope is up 2 over 1. So since I can't go up anymore, you can also go down and left. Normally, I tend to do enough dots, which means, to me, it means the entire grid. The more dots I make, the straighter my line. So, whoa, that is a, a wavy line there. That's not a good looking line at all. Okay, so since I miss a couple of dots, I'm going to make my dots really, really thick. Now, if you're on paper, it's better yet for you to get a ruler. So that way you did not or shouldn't be making a crooked line like I did. I will be having two graphs on one grid, so let's label each one. The other one is called g of x equals 1 half x minus 4. We will start with the y intercept at negative 4, go up 1 over 2. And I apologize for lots and lots of noises at my house. It is under construction, therefore... You're going to hear saw noises and hammer noises. I hope you guys don't mind. Oops. Okay. So this is my g of x. Now the question says, are f of x and g of x inverse functions? Whoa. Okay. So that is a brand new word right there. Inverse. So let's define a couple of things before we go and answer that question. First question, first definition is inverse relation. And again, if I'm going too fast, you can always hit pause and then write it and then continue. Inverse relation, if a relation pairs element A of its domain to element B of its range, the inverse relation pairs B with A, okay? So in plain English, if A comma B is a point of a relation then the point of an inverse is b comma a what does that mean that means all we have to do is switching the domain and and range da 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 okay so let's go and see let's pick a couple of random dots on f of x or g of x doesn't really matter so let's pick this very tall point up here that's what, 2 comma 10. Let's pick this one. What's this dot? Negative 2 and 4. Negative 2 and 4. Let's pick this guy right here. What's this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6 and negative 4. So randomly I have chosen three dots. Let's go and see if we can find three dots but domain and range have switched such that the x and y are now switched. Is there a dot on the g function called 10 comma 2? 10 comma 2. Oh, is that 1? You know what? I lied because my dot was so fat. Can you fix that really quickly? This is 1. Whoops. This is 1. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing about having such a fat dot. I didn't know. Uh, where that was located. That was 10 comma 1. Okay, so um, if it's inverse, I should be able to find a point that's, I'm sorry, 1 comma 10. If it's inverse, I should be able to find a point that's 10 comma 1, which this one's skinnier. These dots are skinnier, so I can easily find it. So this dot is now switched with that. So, so far, those two dots are inverses, okay? Can I find a point called 4 comma negative 2? 2, 4. Yes! Woohoo! 4 comma negative 2. Those two x's and y are also switched. So those two are inverse of each other. Can I find a point called negative 4 comma negative 6? So 1, 2, 3, 4, da, 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 this one. So yes, negative 4 comma negative 6. So as you can see, with three random chosen points, we found three points on the g of x that, that has the x is now the y and the y is now the x. So those two functions are definitely inverse of each other. Inverse functions. If a function is one to one, 
its inverse will be a function. So this is super important, okay? We have to identify if the regular function is one to one first before we can go and find an inverse function. Two functions f and g are said to be inverses of each other if f composed with g and g composed with f must turn out to be x. We'll talk more about that later. But if we are just giving graphs, you can just look and see if the x and y have switched. Okay. How do you know a relation is a function? And how do you know on the box to the right if a function is one to one? For a relation to be a function, each x value of the domain must correspond to one y value in the range. Okay, so that's how we know a relation is a function. Not all relations are function. How do you know a function is one to one? For a function to be one to one, each y value of the range must also correspond to exactly one x value of the domain. So now for a function to be one to one, it has to be a function first, then in addition is stricter. Now, each y value can only have one x value as well. So here are the guidelines to find an inverse function algebraically. First, we have to decide, is the original function a one-to-one? -one? If you say yes, you go on and find the inverse function. If you say no, then you can stop and say, and then you can box up an answer saying not a one-to-one. -one. Then next, I want you to find x, okay, solve for x. Once you have solved for x, I would like for you to rewrite it as f of y or g of y or h of y. Look at the original um, way that it was written. Was it written f of x equals? Then its inverse would be f of y equals. Was it written h of x equals? Then its inverse would be written h of y equals. Now rename any of those, okay? Rename any of those using this notation right here. F to the negative one power of x or g to the negative one power of x or h to the negative one power of x. These are actually read f inverse of x, g inverse of x, and h inverse of x. These are read h of y, g of y, and f of y. Now, when you are writing it in the h inverse of x notation, this x is the same as the output of the original, okay? So be mindful that these notations right here, guys, are the same of these right here. Um, so, but in the f inverse notation, such as these and these and these, those x's are the y of the original, not the x of the original, okay? So those x's are the outputs of the original. Because anytime you're using x, I'm very nervous because most of us associate x with an input, but when you're writing this way, the inverse way, those x's are actually outputs of the original, okay? Let's do a few examples here. Find the inverse function if it exists. So first, I want you to find one-to-oneness. So g of x equals 3x plus 9. This is a line, so it is definitely a one-to-one. -one. First step I want you to do is rewrite it as y equals 3x plus 9. And after you have rewritten it as y equals, solve for x. To solve for x, we will move the 9 over. So y minus 9 equals 3 times x. To get rid of the 3, you may multiply both sides by 1 third or divide both sides by 3. So now we have x equals 1 third times y minus 9. This is now an inverse function because we switch x and y and y for x. But remember, I will ask you to write every inverse function you find in two ways. We were given g of x equals, so now I would like for you to write y, g of y equals, one third y minus nine equal, and then box that up. This is one of the ways that I would ask you to write. Another way that I would like for you to write is g inverse notation of x equals one third. Now I'm going to use a different color here to highlight. We are now using x 
here, okay? Um, so, but knowing that this X is still the output of the original, okay? So always write it two ways for our class. Number three, find the inverse function. So h of x equals x squared minus 5. This is a parabola. As you can see, a parabola is not a one-to-one -one because it does not pass the horizontal line test. It has two x values for one y. So we don't have to find an inverse function here. It's not a one-to-one a -one function. Number four, you're given, you are given three dots, three comma eight, four comma negative two, and five comma negative three. Let me plot these dots out for you. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. So the easiest way for you to check whether it's a function or not, and it's a one-to-one -one or not, just plot them out. Or you can check, are all the x's different, all the y's different? If they're all different, then you know it's a one-to-one. -one. So three comma eight, here's your dot, four comma negative two, here's another dot, and five comma negative three. So we have three dots. To see if it's a function or not, you can simply make vertical line tests. Okay, so whenever you make vertical line tests, none of them intersect more than once, then you know it's a function. Now, Make horizontal line tests for one-to-oneness. If you make horizontal line tests and they don't intersect more than once, you know it's a one-to-one -one function. So this is definitely a one-to-one -one function. Yes on one-to-one. -one. So because we said yes on one-to-one, -one, these are three dots. They're not a continuous function. So when you find its inverse, you don't have to write g of x or x or, or f of, I'm sorry, g of y or f of y or h of y. You can just rewrite them as three dots. And when they're given to you as dots, guys, it's really easy. All you got to do is switch x and y and y for x. So the y used to be negative 2. It is now your x of negative 2. x used to be 4. It is now your y. And the last dot is negative 3, comma 5. Box that up. Whoa, whoa. And that's your inverse function. Yes, dots can be a function. Number five, number five said, hey, can you possibly find an inverse function for this? This is a reciprocal function. And if you remember, a reciprocal function looks something like that. That's more like a parent function. This one has a translation to the left by two and downward of eight units. So it is still a function. In addition, it's also a one-to-one -one function. Because it's a one-to-one -one function, we can find an inverse, write it as a y equal first. Then from here, try to solve for x, add 8 to both sides. y plus 8 equals 1 over x plus 2. We have a fraction, so what we want to do is multiply both sides by x plus 2 to cancel out your fractions. After multiplying by x plus 2, we now have x plus 2 times y plus 8 equals 1. Remember, our goal is to solve for, for x. I'm sorry, not solve. Yes, I'm sorry, solve for x. So let me spell that out. Uh, actually, so here, solve for x, okay? Because it used to be y equals. Its inverse must be x equals. So solve for x. To solve for x, we now get rid of the y plus 8, y plus 8. We have x plus 2 equals 1 over y plus 8. Now the last spot is subtract 2 from both sides. I'm going to move over here. So now we have x equals 1 over y plus 8 subtract 2. Technically, this is the inverse of f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 minus 8. But remember, I asked you to write it this way. So f of y equals 1 over y plus 8 minus 2. Box that up. I also ask you to write two formats every time. f inverse of x equals 1 over, remember, this is the part you change, this x right here. Okay? And everything else should be the, the same from the previous format. That is the end of example five. We have one more example here. 
on this uh, on this skill. I'm not skill, this type of question. How would you check your answer? I know in your notes, it, it's my typo. I know in your notes, this example three, but can you please change it to example two? How would you check your answer in example two to see if you have the correct inverse function? Remember in the notes earlier, we said for two functions to be inverses of each other, this is where it's important. F composed with G. Is it letting me highlight? It's frozen on me? Nope, can't highlight it. Okay, so F composed with G of, F composed with G must be identical to G composed with F and they both have to turn out to be eight for those to say that they're inverse functions of one another. On example two, we found the inverse already. Let me just copy that down. We, they, I think we used G in example two. G of X on number two was three X plus nine. And then we found G inverse of X equals it was one third times x minus nine, yep. So to prove that these are inverses, if the inverse function is correct, we do composition, okay? G of x composed with G inverse of x, and they must turn out to be x, and the keyword is and, G inverse of x, Compose with g of x must also turn out to be x. So our job right here is just to prove it slowly, okay? So step one, g of x composed of g inverse by definition is g quantity of g inverse of x. Our job is to prove to see if it comes out to be x. Step number two, g of, now let's replace this. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. I was going to highlight it, but I don't think it'll highlight. Okay, let's do that. That right there with this. So that's going to be one third x minus nine. And as you know already, we need to, every time we see an x in the regular g, we plug in that orange writing, which is, is this the orange one? Okay, this one. One third times quantity x minus 9. And then from here, slowly work out your algebra. So step number 3, it's going to be, you can distribute this 3 and that 1 third. That will give you a 1, which I don't need to write a 1. And then now you just have the quantity of x minus 9 plus 9, which really x minus 9 plus 9, which equals to x. So on this side, we can write a check mark because it did come out to be x. The question is, is it going to come out to be x on the right side? Now, if one side comes out to be x and the other side does not, that means we did something wrong, okay? One, g inverse of g of x, that is the definition of the composition. Remember, we're trying to see if it comes out to be x. So if number two, g inverse, if we had g of x, we now plug that in, that's 3x plus 9. Then every time we see an x in the g inverse, which is one spot, I'm going to give myself some space, we plug that in, which is 3x plus 9. From here, slowly work out your algebra, we can see that a couple things are canceling, such as those. And from there, we can see that one third times three x, it's just immediately x. So we did it, okay? We knew that the inverse function we found is correct because when we check it with the definition of inverse, they both came out to be x. Woo woo! All right, let's go on to this one. Finding the inverse graphically. Here are the guidelines. List the point on the graph. Switch the domain and range, AKA switch X and Y and Y for X. And number three, plot or graph your new points. Ready? 
Example 7, find the inverse graphically is the inverse a function. So the first thing you want to do is, hey, can you, the, in, if, the inverse of function if the original is a one-to-one, -one, okay? So this is definitely a one-to-one. -one. This is a one-to-one. -one. So the inverse is definitely a function, okay? So let's write that straight away. The inverse is a function. And we haven't even graphed it out yet, but that's okay. If you can see that the original is one-to-one, -one, the inverse would be a function. Now, let's locate a few points of the original. You don't need to locate every point. Let's this, this one. This is 10, comma, negative 3. It's a line, so I want three points. This is 0, comma, 2, and this dot. What's that one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Positive 5. I have labeled three points from the original. I'm going to be using orange for my inverse. So all we do is switch x and y and y for x. So we have 5 comma negative 6, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 6. This is 5 comma negative 6. 0, 2, so 2 comma 0, 2 comma 0, and negative 3 up 10. Negative 3 comma 10. I have three dots. I'm going to try my best to make a straight line. Ooh, that's a good job. So that, my orange, is my F inverse, okay, of X. The original was already in black. So part A says, find F of zero. That's the original function. So that means, find this is an X in the original. I'm looking for Y. So F of zero is two. Now, B says find F inverse of 0. Now, look at the orange graph, okay? Look at the orange graph. I'm going to use a different pink. When X is 0 on the orange graph, what is Y? 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Looks like this is 0, comma 4 on the orange graph. Now, if I'm not sure of that because I graph that by hand, can I go find the y value of zero? This is y in the original, okay? Well, yes, I can find right there. That looks like a y value of zero and x value of also four. So that means I can find it on either graph depending on um, if you're looking at X in the inverse or Y in the original. C says find X when the original graph has a Y value of 2. When Y value of 2 in the original, okay, it's right there, X is 0. So X equals 0. Now find x when the f inverse of x is 4. So you can go to the inverse and look, I'm going to use a different color now, and look for the y value at 4. So look, the inverse function is going to be the orange. Let's go to my orange graph. Here's my orange graph, okay? When y is 4 on the orange graph, x happens to be 0. Now, if, okay, so x, the answer is x equals to 0 on my orange graph. Now, another way that you can look for this is, this is, remember, this is the x in the original. You can go and find the x of 4 in the original to see what the answer is, and the answer is 0, so you know you did it right. What is the line of symmetry for F and its inverse? And this is amazing, okay? And here's why this is so awesome. Earlier, we did the composition. We did the composition from the definition. And it said, the composition must come out to be 
x by definition. Well, would you agree y equals x is a line? Well, there's magic to that, really. I'm going to plot the line y equals x, okay? y equals x. What this line is doing is that if x is 5, y is 5, and if x is negative 10, y is negative 10. I'm just going along with this. Okay, so here's that line, y'all. This is y equals x. Well, this has a magic value or magic concept to it. This one says, what is the line of symmetry for f and its inverse? If you were to take your paper okay, and fold it, I'm going to use a different color because I've already used a bunch, and fold it, this piece right here will line up perfectly with that piece. And um, this, let's see what other color I haven't used. And this one. This piece right here, guys, will line up perfectly with that piece. Fold it perfectly on that line that we just drew in the green. So if you fold it perfectly, those two will line up perfectly. That's a symmetry. So the line of symmetry of the inverse, its original, is always y equals x. So that's why that is super cool, right? And we stated that the orange line, which is the inverse line, it's a function already. Number eight, let me see. We have number eight and number nine left, and that's it for this unit. Number eight says, is the inverse going to be a function? Even before we start, Remember, the instruction on this is find the inverse, not inverse function. So we can still find the inverse when the original is not a one-to-one. -one. Original is not a one-to-one. -one. So its inverse is not a function. So we are going to box this up because it asks, is the inverse a function and it's not. So we're just gonna sketch it out. I'm gonna go and label the original. This one, the vertex is one comma four, one comma four, because when I sketch out its inverse, all I do is switch x and y and y for x. And I'm just gonna find the x intercepts, three comma zero and negative one comma zero. We now will switch these, okay? I'm gonna go to four, comma one, that's my vertex, four comma one. I will now go to zero, up three, that is my one intercept, and negative, um, and then this dot is now zero, negative one, so there you go. And it opens to the left because the original opens downward. So this right here is your inverse f inverse of x. Let's go and answer some key questions on the right box. Find f of 0. That's the original. So when x is 0, y is going to be, looks like I have 0, comma, okay, 3. Now, f inverse of 0, meaning that you can go to the inverse function and look at the inverse function, when x is 0 on the inverse function, I'm going to use its inverse color here. I have two answers, okay? Here and here. So this dot right here was 0, comma, negative 1, and this dot up here was 0, comma, 3. So I have two answers. I have y, well, I have equals negative 1 and positive 3. Let us see. Find the x value when y is 2. That's the original. So when y is 2, let's see. When y is 2, x is about, you have two spots. One's right here and one's right here. Negative half maybe. x equals negative half. And that one, let's say about 2.5. Okay, so 2.5. Find x when 
f inverse equals to 4. So I'm going to get a different color. Inverse equals to 4. So let's go to 4 on y. 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere here. Okay. So that's when the inverse 4. But I have a hard time looking at the inverse graph because I sketched that out myself. So since I have a hard time on that, what I can do is go look at x. Look at x equals 4 on the original, okay? All right, when it's x equals to 4. 1, 2, here we go. This is going to give me a better value. It's right there. So the answer, when x is 4 on the original, it looks like the output of the original is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. So I know the answer is 5, and there's only one answer. What is the line of symmetry for f and its inverse? And I know, I'm going to erase a couple of dots, I mean lines here, so we can... When I go and graph out y equals 2, x guys you know is this line right here that's really the magic okay that means when i fold it along this line that i'm just plotting they would line up perfectly so doo -doo 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 -doo. there you go so when i fold it this piece right here will line up perfectly with this piece right here and then the other half, like this bigger piece right here, okay, would line up with that bigger piece right there. And then we have one more piece, and this a pink. This tiny piece right here would line up with that tiny piece right there. Is that amazing? Amazing. Um, so the line of symmetry is always y equals to x. Last graph of this lecture. Um, let's go and label some points on this one. I can see one, two, three, four, so I'll label all four. This is four comma two. This is going to be, is it four comma two? No, one, two, three, two, four, yep. This is three comma zero. This is two comma negative two, and this is one, two, three, four, five. Negative five comma one, two, three, four, negative four. All I do is switch x and y and y for x, so here we go. So no, negative 4, go to negative 5, negative 4, negative 5, that's my first dot. Negative 2, up 2, negative 2, up 2, and 0, positive 3, and that's my next dot, and 2, up 4, 2, I just plot that 4, 0, 3, and 2 is 4, so there you go. Okay, so here's my f inverse of x. The original is a one-to-one, -one, so this inverse, f inverse of x, is a one-to-one. -one. Box that up. Part A, find f of zero. That means you go to the original and eyeball the location for x is zero. What is the y? I think y came out to be what? one two three negative three ish then f inverse of zero let's go to the pink graph go to the zero it looks like it's about let's see one two three one on the pink graph okay so looks like about three on the pink graph um, find x when f of x equals to 2. So when y equals to 2, let's see, when, when y equals to 2, x happened to be what? Negative 2? x equals to negative 2. Look at the pink graph now. Find x when f inverse of x is 4. So you can go to 4 on the pink graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. Looks like you have an x location of positive 2. And by now, we know the line of symmetry is y equals 2x. And if you don't believe me, you can go and graph out the line y equals x and n. 
and see that these two have this magical bond over this line because if you fold it on this line guess what happened to the inverse and its original isn't that beautiful this is the line y goes x they line up perfectly hey guys this is it all done with unit four